Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 76 to 80. So first, I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 76, 77, 78, 79, and 80. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 76, we're asked how many phenotypes exist for blood type. So phenotypes for blood type. Well, there are three main genotypes or like alleles that you can have. There's the dominant form, the big eye, and that can be A or B. And then there's a recessive form, the little eye. If you get two of IA, or you get one of these, and then the recessive form, this is type A. Similarly, if you get two of the dominant B type, or one and the recessive allele, this is type B. If you get a copy of both of the dominant alleles, A and B, you are now blood type AB. And then the only other one is if you have two of the recessive type, that is type O. So therefore, these are the phenotypes that result from the genotypes. There are four main types. In question 77, it says a researcher has an agar plate covered with a lawn of E. coli. She has a drop of an unknown substance, and the next day there's a clear spot on the plate where the substance was added. This substance could be blank. We want to know the the type of substance that she added, and when she added it on an agar plate with E. coli, there was a clear spot, meaning that that substance caused the death of E. coli where it was dropped. So which things can cause the death of E. coli? Keep in mind that E. coli is a bacterium. Option A is saying a virus undergoing the lytic cycle. Yes, this makes sense. So bacterial viruses can undergo a lytic cycle, and this is a cycle in which they burst from whichever species they're in and cause it to lice and they they burst from that species they explode they break the membrane and the cell and everything like that so yes this would cause the death of the e coli option two is seeing a virus undergoing the productive cycle no this can't be true because that happens for animal viruses it does not happen in bacterial viruses and finally option three is seeing a chemical that is toxic to prokaryotes yes this is something which could be true so C is our correct answer for question 77. Question 78 is asking us which of the following is not a requirement of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which is not a requirement. So three of these things are, one of these is not. Option A is saying mating is random. Yes, that is something that the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium requires. B is saying allele frequencies are exactly equal in both sexes. Yes, this is also something which is required for us to use this equation. C is saying there's no mutation of genes. Yes, this equilibrium requires there to be no mutations in this population so that we can just look at the alleles that are present and then begin to discuss those alleles without worrying about mutation. So these are things that we do to make things, to make our calculation more simpler. But option D is saying organisms are haploid that is incorrect. So we don't require organisms to be haploid, we actually require them to be diploid, meaning you have two alleles for every gene. That is what we use the Hardy-Weinberg for. If we just had one allele, that would be a whole different, whole different question and topic that we're talking about, but the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium relates to two alleles. In question 79, we're asked, what is which of the following is the primary purpose of bile salts? So the purpose of bile salts. Bile salts, the way that they look, they are mainly nonpolar, but they also have some polar parts to them. So because of this, they are able to go and break down any fat droplets that there are in the small intestine. So they break down fat droplets, and then they can also interact with the aqueous environment and then therefore they can break down the fat droplets and form a kind of micelle around the fat droplets, which 
prevents the fat droplets from coming together and making a big fat droplet. Therefore, there's more surface area available for any enzymes that are going to come and break down the fat. So here is one example of the structure of a bile salt. Option A is saying they're related to cholesterol degradation. No. B is saying buffering the intestines for fat metabolism. They are related to fat metabolism, but not for the purpose of buffering the intestines. They don't play some buffer role. C is saying synthesis into fats. No, they do not turn into fats. And D is correct. They help in the emulsification of fats, which means breaking down those bigger globules into smaller globules for more surface area. This helps with digestion of the fats. In question 80, it says an individual presents to their doctor given alterations in their sleep-wake cycle. They feel that they feel that they're tired around 5 p.m. every evening and they sleep until 2 a.m., feeling entirely rested. This individual may have a defect in their blank. So someone has a defect in something which is related to their sleep-wake cycle. So is it option A, parallel processing centers? No, the parallel processing centers are related to things like processing multiple signals that we get at once. Like if we're looking at something and we see that there is color to what we're seeing, there's depth, there's motion going on. Rather than processing all of these things individually, parallel processing allows us to do it at the same time, but that's not really relevant to the sleep-wake cycle. Option B is the hypothalamus, and this part of the brain is involved in many different things, like controlling hunger is one of them, and it is also involved in controlling the sleep-wake cycle. The hypothalamus, it contains the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is responsible for the circadian rhythm, and then therefore that's related to sleep-wake cycles. So B is our correct answer. Option C is talking about the temporal lobe, and some functions of this lobe include vision, memory, language, and emotion, but it is not related to the sleep-wake cycle. And finally, option D is talking about rods and cone cells of the eye. If they had some problem seeing things visually, then we might say that there's something wrong with the rods and the cones, but they're not saying that they have any problem seeing things. It's more so they have some issue with their sleep-wake cycle. So most likely it's gonna be some part of the brain which is related to the circadian rhythm. Therefore, B is the correct answer. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions, just like we did in this video, going through all the different answers and explaining why each one is correct or incorrect. And other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel here to make sure to stay up to date with the videos that we post. And then that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next.